All right, welcome to Pass the Mic for Friday. We have hit June, June 2nd, 2023. We're back after another week off. Episode 72 on Zoom. Mike Tihoti here. Joining me, Mr. Michael Gervasi. Your old friend, let me break it down for you again. You know how I say it because I'm truly genuine. Don't be a hard rock when you really are a gem. You oh, know, that. man, I do know this. Is this like we're recording this on Memorial Day? Does this have any yeah. uh, no, connection no. to Memorial Day? No, nope. there's no connection to Memorial Day. Nope. Uh, I have no clue. Then the words mean nothing to me. This is Lauren. I was going to say, I was going to say Lee Greenwood. <laughs> no, that would have been funny. That, that was Lauren Hill Duop. That, oh, that thing, that, that thing. thing. That thing. Yes. Yeah. See, I knew yeah. you would see, know that. See, that's hard without the music. You know, that's what I mean. Like, you know, know. it's just, hard. and that was really two lines. I mean, I'm not making excuses. I am making excuses for us being gone for another week. Um, again, track was still sort of going on. We had, I had a lot of business going on that week. You were, the cat was healthy and fine. We're, we're not, not going to blame the cat for this week. And sort of the days again, just got away from us. Um, no excuse, but it sort of just got away from us. Uh, I was, we were planning to record, I think last Wednesday, right? And then yeah. my day sort of fell through on that. And then from exactly. there, like our schedule just filled up. So apologies for that. We did get some feedback on the air conditioning. I know some people mentioned, I just, before I came on this, I was on Facebook and one of the questions on Down River and Friends was, have you turned your air conditioning on yet? And oh, there's yeah. like 300 comments and people are either saying yes or no. And again, it still goes back to baffling my mind that people pay for this sort of appliance, right? It's not yeah. a cheap feature and I get it. DT is expensive, but like these people are like, oh, I suffered last night. Like I'm like, you wouldn't do this in the winter with heat, right? Like you wouldn't right. do it. Like if it was like 30 degrees out and you didn't, you wouldn't turn the heat off because you would be just like, I'll just suffer and make it through. Right. But people right. do it with air. It's just uh, baffling me. So, and then this just also goes into how fast just May flies by. Like we're at graduation this Friday. When this episode comes out, it's graduation Friday. Yeah. So, um, but we're thankfully slowing down. Have you, did you hear anything back from uh, last week? Yeah, a couple things. First off, um, man, I'm drawing a blank on my hot mic and it was, it's, God, this is a sign of old age and being unprepared. Well, it's two weeks but... away. It's two weeks. Ago. Yes. But I did. OK, so that song uh, was actually uh, Deontay, who's in Arizona. He suggested I do Lauren Hill. He also offered an interesting uh, little note here. I did not. And that, these little facts, a lot of times I know the song I did last time, um, you know, was Bobby Brown. And that led to a discussion on, you know, me calling you New Edition. And, you know, yes. because you're yeah, my TikTok fame. Right, right, right. right. And um, Ray Parker Jr., famous for, amongst other things, the, the Ghostbusters yep. original, uh, wrote Mr. Telephone Man by New Edition, but was told it would not be a hit. So he gave it to them. Wow. So, so Ray Parker yeah, Jr. So... Interesting. And a little uh, music yeah. facts. I bet I bet your friend out in Arizona does have his air conditioning on. I, I would bet that he does. <laughs> he is always mocking us for, because he got, obviously he got out. Uh, he's yes. getting out. So yes, I'm sure that he his air is on. I wouldn't. I I I'd bet my any amount of money on it. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure. And and again, we the last episode we did, we also talked about teacher appreciation. Um, it was a great week, like we mentioned. Um, you know, we heard from some other people too as well. Of, you know what other districts did. And again, I just want to give a big shout out and thanks to everyone that was part of that. It's time for my mic, and I had this mic lined up a few weeks ago, and I switched last minute. And I forget why. Um, but I am going with a 68 year old and it's going to tie into our overrated and underrated because I, um, this 60 year old, 68 year old Canadian musician, uh, fame, most famous for, uh, this being the lead singer of the band lover boy. Are you familiar with them? Did they sing the weekend? Everybody, everybody's working for the weekend. Okay. Everybody's working for the weekend. That was their big hit. They used to growing up right like on Fridays around here the top 40 stations every station would play it like at Friday at like five o'clock right right staple song right like you know what and our well, this will tie into our overrated underrated however also maybe a little less famous he did the duet from Footloose with uh Ann Wilson from Heart Almost Paradise you remember that oh, song? Wow. I did Almost not know paradise. Look at this. Like we're just dropping musical. Yeah, yeah. That, that, a hell of a soundtrack, Footloose. Um, I know it's not hip hop, but yeah, Mike 
Michael Reno. Now there's another Michael Reno that's like a conductor of sympathy, sympathies. Um, you can pick him later down the road if you want. I'm taking the pop music Michael Reno to go up on the wall as our Mike of the week. Still going strong. I'm sure Loverboy is playing at Pine Knob for like $10 or something. $10 launch seats this summer if you want to check them out. So listen, I do got to point out here that the irony, kind of sad actually, you're giving the Canadian a shout out here. On on Memorial Day. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough, but it's a, but I'm also we're building up to what our overrated and underrated is and everybody's working for the weekend. Mm. It played okay. it. Yeah. Right. I, I, I'm sure I'm many sure. there does can, Canada have a Memorial Day? Maybe it's a different weekend. I don't know. I'm sure they lost troops in various battles, so uh, you know, what you know, we're welcoming them all here, so. So with that, our education topic this week, this is uh, something you came up with. I think it's a good idea. It's going to be talking about the intricacies and the you know, I think like if you don't work in a school and if you just have the outside vision of being a parent or a kid, you sort of have this impression that everyone comes to work 180 some days, gets along with everybody else and everything works perfectly, right? Because most like most of our, all of our coworkers are very professional, right? Like, sure. so even when things do go wrong or do go awry, you don't have situations where people are yelling at each other in the hallway or that sort of thing. It's just something that's thankfully doesn't take place. I, as a student all my years, I never witnessed it. And in 25 years at work, I've never witnessed it firsthand. Now, does that mean that for 25 years here, everyone has gotten along with everybody? I mean, we're not going to make stuff up here and lie. So you wanted to talk about sort of like the intricacies of professional relationships, how we handle those, how you handle them, how I handle them, and, um, you know, what works, what doesn't work, and that sort of thing. So with that, why don't you take us away? And I think you're going to talk a little bit about your department here. Yeah, so... My department, as you know, and this this goes without saying, in any field you're in, we have a lot of very different personalities. Um, I'm a little more passive, as is one other member of the department. You have some dominant personalities. You have everything you can imagine in between as well. And, um, you know, when we put together a curriculum, now we're we're bound by the state standards. We're not teaching what we want. That's not something we get to do. But within these certain parameters, we do have some wiggle room in terms of how we teach it, uh, the resources we use, so forth and so on. And so in theory, we are supposed to be on the exact same page. Uh, if we're teaching, you know, if I'm teaching a class, you're teaching the same class, we should be teaching the same thing. And mm-hmm. pretty much on the day. There's going to be some variation because of natural occurrences that take place during the school year, whether it's, you know, it, uh, you have something going on in the gym, you have, you know, uh, homecoming week festivities, whatever the case may be. But in general, we should be on the same page. If you don't have a good working relationship with these people, um, it, your life could be miserable. It could be hell. And uh, I know that I, over the years, have acquired some very good educational tools from outside, you know, outsiders, uh, people that helped me out in a lot of ways. I, you know, I was fortunate enough to become friends with the uh, former president. I'm going to name drop here. Well, I won't name drop it. I'll just say who he is. Former president of the Michigan Council of Social Studies. He gave me a bunch of things. And, um, you know, so I acquired some stuff. At the same time, I know the people in my department have wonderful things. So if you don't have a good relationship with them, your job is going to become infinitely more difficult. uh, And it real will impact the kids because you're not uh, fulfilling your potential as an educator using every resource that's out there. So I'm, I kind of told you this topic just in that sense, the importance of being able to work with your colleagues, because, you know, you know, you stop and think about the relation just in pro sports in general. I know the issue was a little bit overblown, but the one year that the media really focused on the teamwork and camaraderie of this Piston team versus the divide between Shaq and Kobe. Now, again, it turns out everything was probably a little bit overblown on both sides. But the fact of the matter is they really weren't getting along at that time. And so I think it's important um, for the listener to know that if you do not have a good working relationship with the people that you were closest to, it, it everybody suffers as a result. Yeah. And I think, you know, and again, nowhere's perfect. Nobody, nobody's perfect. You know, I'm sure you and I, you know, we, I think we both like try to avoid conflict. We will oftentimes, um, you know, not, we're not going to die on a hill of something if it, you know, unless it's something very crucial to us um, with that sort of mentality. Um, but there are still days where, you know, things don't just go well and you sort of 
just suck it up and move on. Like I said, we've both been here quite a while. I'm here a little more than you. There is nobody that I don't feel like I have a good professional working relationship with in the building. You know, mm-hmm. do I agree with everyone every day? That's not the case. But for the most part, you know, uh, 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 there's, th- there's things out there that people are better at me than. There are things that I'm better at some people. There are things that I'm not as good as other people. And I'm willing to accept that. I don't think I'm the best person in the building. I don't think I'm the worst person in the building. But you know what? Even the worst person in the building, I think they have some skills and qualities sure. that are better than me. Right. And that's how I'm always going to be. Um, you know, I had a situation that happened with me, not with anyone in our building, but I feel the way I sort of do it is I'm always going to be professional. I'm not going to be unprofessional about anything. But the other thing is, once I get to a point where I feel like if someone really has done me wrong, and again, I want to make this perfectly clear right now, nobody in my building I feel has done this, but there may be other people. If someone has done me wrong, then I'm done. I'm not going to make a fool of myself. I'm not going to embarrass anyone. I'm not going to embarrass myself. I'm just done. I'm done with that. I'm going to move on and work with a group of core of people that respect my work, that I respect their work. And I think that's how most of us go about our day. Um, that's just a sad truth of the way it is. That's where I am now. I'm not going to get into details of where I am with my stuff. Um, along those same lines, and I don't, this is not a knock on anyone. I think that when it comes down to it, again, I res- I- I'm proud of everyone that I work with. I think they, you know, I'm respect everything they do. But then there's also that there's a smaller core. I think we can all be honest, right? There's a smaller core of people that we really trust, that we can really go to if we're having trouble, that if we need help, that if we need advice that we go to, that's not all 50, 60 people in the building. It's probably a smaller core of like three to four. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that everyone's three or four is a little different, um, you know, based upon subject matter, based upon experience, based upon anything. Personality, yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, and there's nothing, you know, that's, there's nothing wrong with being honest and saying that. And that's the way it is with me. You know, I, I think obviously we're not, we're not, I'm shocking anyone when we say we are both two people that often text each other and ask questions um, back and forth about day-to-day operation stuff or advice on stuff. You know, we can throw Max Bailey in there um, from Shoemate as well, even from a different building. That's just something that we know that, you know, amongst us three, we can trust. There's other people that I know that, you know, um, you know, for as many times as Patrick Rice and I have butted heads, Dr. Patrick Rice, and we joke around a lot of them. I know he's someone professionally that I can talk to and he will give me sound advice you know what i mean there's you know and that's and that was an instance where i sort of got a little heated with him one day you know but that still you know it 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 happens uh because you sort of build these relationships and again anyone that says otherwise and says that everyone gets along with everybody every day that's just not true but professionally you can hold yourself to a certain extent the same goes with like administration um you know i i feel like i get along pretty well with all three of our administrators um, I, 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 you know, they, I respect them. They respect my input, you know, and then some days a boss has to correct you, right? Like we, that's part of being a boss. Like we've all, like I told you the story way back when I was a young teacher, money was stolen from my room. You know, I had to be corrected. I was wrong. Mm-hmm. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong. You shouldn't break relationships or get angry if someone has to correct you. Um, I, I would, you know, I don't think we can speak on like what every building's like, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's, circumstances in different buildings, things happen. But for the most part, that's one thing about educators. I think they do a good job of um, keeping things professional at work. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just there. Anything else you want to add on the topic? No, I mean, ultimately you have to, uh, because again, ultimately you got in this, you, I, we all got into this for the purpose of serving kids, right? And you're not serving them if you are putting some personal agenda ahead of, you know, And so it's best to it's best to either resolve it or if it's a personal like don't let that personal agenda take up your life and that's right. where I am right now I'm not letting it take up my life I'm moving on things were decided people did something that's fine they're going to make their bed and sleep in it I'm going to move on and do things my way I'm not going to let it take over my life and that's where I am this week so all right overrated underrated this ties back into Mike Reno everybody working for the weekend it is Memorial Day weekend we're recording this on Memorial Day so three-day weekends um, not many of them out there right Memorial Day Labor Day Thanksgiving is really like a long we, we call it long weekends not just three-day weekends right so right. long weekend so that really you can throw Thanksgiving in there you know some people get Columbus Day we don't get Columbus Day right isn't that a uh, is that a Monday usually uh, uh, yeah. I'm not a, yeah I'm not a big Columbus Day guy no offense to the Italian American community your friends and family uh but long weekends so what is your overrated for long weekends yeah and Mike I, I, this is a recency bias because this happened yesterday uh and I'm gonna I'm gonna sound like get off my lawn old guy right now but it's the fireworks um <laughs> I, know, texted, depending... I texted last yes. night 
Oh, no, it season is on. open. I, it was going on as you, you sent that to me, and I, I replied, yep, uh, because it was happening. Um, God, I, I really feel like I sound old with this, but it just has always been, outside of the fourth, it's just been always been such an irritant to me. Um, nothing more than that, just irritating, but man, I, I don't, I just don't get it. I don't understand it. Um, the, 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 this fascination, you know, um, so last night as they were going off, I'm just like, God, this is, what are we doing here? It's May. And, but yeah, so that's my overrated. It's just that's kicking fun. off the season. We've beaten this horse quite a bit I know, on the show. I know. We've, I, and I'm not trying to give you a hard time. No, I'm the, you know, everyone knows my thoughts too. Stuff is so expensive nowadays. I'd rather spend my money on other things anyway. You know, I don't want to hear any complaint about gas prices when you're spending whatever it is yeah. to, to burn something literally and blow it up. Yeah. You know, um, I, I don't, but I, in, that, in that case, even if you're not, I don't even care to watch them. Like, I, I, I it's just, I, I, right. you know what? They're going to lock me up in Canadian jail or something I, for not being a true American. I, I don't know, but I'm right with you. You knew I was going to be right there with you on this. I And again, I'm not the one that much, I, I don't care about, it doesn't bother me like in slain him. I, I can sleep through anything. My dog gets a little uptight, but nothing like crazy. I know some people have to drug their dogs, uh, but you know, you're right. I, I, I'm more like a concern, like if my house gets messed up or, you know, something lands on my house or my car or something, that's it. That's the only thing that, but you know, to each their own, that's it. My overrated for a, a, a long weekend or is incorporating travel into a long weekend. I think it's, I get it. A lot of people do it here. A lot of people go up north or whatever and that sort of thing and go up to the lake or the cottage. Uh, to me, that small of a window for traveling seems just very stressful to me. Like yeah. I, I like I, if if I'm especially involves road, it usually involves road trips. It's, you know, yeah, there's, it's, Chloe. there's Chloe offer shift at Captain Jim's free plug. Uh, the it, to me, it's just too short for travel. And so like, okay, so what do you leave Friday right after work? Um, then you're there, you know, then you, by the time you have there, it's late Friday, then you got Saturday, Sunday. Do you come home Monday? Do you come home Sunday? Like, you know where I was all weekend? Brownstown Township. Um, in my house, most of it, did a quick run to Meyer, had, went over to my neighbors Friday evening for a couple of beverages, uh, family-friendly beverages, and then just got back from uh, Captain Jim's, had a couple of beverages as my daughter was working. Um, and that was it. And I'm totally fine with that. I, I I have travel safe for later when it's a different time, not around a holiday, wide open. I, I get it. Some people don't get as much paid time off. I'm not trying to be, my head's not in the sand. I get it. Some people that might be their only day off that Monday and they got to right. work something in. But for me, overrated the aspect of traveling on that long weekend. Now, let me ask you this. You just mentioned Meyer. Are you going there for groceries now? Have you completely abandoned well, Kroger? No, I had to do the, so I went to Meyer oh, yeah, and then I okay. swung by Kroger and got the chocolate milk and my son spoiled and their garlic bread. I did get some of the garlic bread. That's the, the you know, it, it, a couple other things, but yeah, I, I'm a two-stop person. That's the way it is. Okay. Meyer's yeah. the, Meyer's the main base. All right. What is your underrated for a long weekend? You know, and so every weekend I got this list that I have to do and, you know, most of it stays the same though. Sometimes vary to clean the fridge or something like that, but um, it, it's just really neat to know, like you have that extra day, right? And my, my daughter, Melina had, uh, this soccer tournament this weekend, every day up until today. And so I really couldn't get the stuff in that I needed to, I'd find a way, you know, I cut the grass yesterday morning real quick before I left, but, um, just that extra day, man, I don't think people really, or maybe it's just me, but I, I, it's like so nice having that buffer. Cause you know, you're not finishing everything. I, I knew I wasn't getting everything done. So having that extra day. I guess it's not the greatest thing in the world to to know that I give myself more time to get the house duties done, but they are things that have to be done. And so I just that extra day to me was the underrated aspect of this weekend. I loved it. I'm going to take attach. I'm going to sort of go on the opposite end of what you said. I love the short next week, especially if, okay, Thanksgiving, yeah. we use the example that it's the short previous week, but most of the right. ones that are Mondays, it's awesome that we're starting and it's already yeah. Tuesday. I that, mm -hmm. that is like the un- heralded hero of this yeah. is that you enjoyed a nice weekend and then your work week is already shorter going in I, I better even than thanksgiving like when it's thanksgiving you know you work monday tuesday wednesday right. some people get wednesday off and you're like okay it's a short week but then you're still right back on that monday this is sort of like that nice little surprise of oh it's already tuesday and before you know it it's already going to be friday we're going to be at the graduation ceremony so i like long weekends mainly because of that short next week that's the unsung underrated it's aspect good, of long yeah. weekends yeah it's it sort of gets lost in everything right because you're sort of like oh man i got to go back to work yes you do have to go back to work 
but you're already starting ahead of the game. You're down one day and it's only a four day week. And, you know, a lot of people treat Thursday like Friday anyway. So it's a really short week. So that's what I have there. All right. Excellent topic. Great topic. We hope everyone had a um, great Memorial Day week. And we hope you remember why you had Monday off. Uh, You know, remember that that's that's truly uh, the reason for the long weekend. It's not to kick off the summer. It's not to plant your flowers. It's to remember all those uh, soldiers, those young soldiers uh, that lost their lives to many uh, vicious battles and wars that uh, gave us our freedom to be able to enjoy enjoy stuff like that. So what is your hot mic take for the week? All right. So this is a shout out to another guy on the thread. Uh, My friend, Paul has uh, has had a rough few weeks. Um, I'll I'll leave it at that certainly, but he sent a text message of his least favorite song of all time. Oh my goodness. It's Jack and Diane. Ooh. um, By John Mellencamp. And it got me thinking, what's my least favorite? And I threw around some, I was having this discussion in the car with my girls, Kristen, her daughter, where, what's your least favorite song? And a, a whole bunch of songs came up, but I always come back to this song by Donna Lewis, where it, from the like mid to late 90s, I love you always forever, near and far. Was the no. And every time I hear it, it, it like grinds at me. Don't so that's, that. my, that's my least favorite song. I want to know. And so we all got to talking in the car. Um, do you have a least favorite song, like a song that just you cannot listen to? Uh, there's not really one that like I, I mean, I don't know. I don't, man, that's a hard question that anytime you get me with these music things, I feel like I'm on the spot. I know. I think, yeah. All joking aside, I know I knocked it earlier. And again, please don't lock me up in communist jail. I think Lee Greenwood's Proud to be an American is a cheap, campy way to get likes as far as patriotism. I think it's yes. not even that it's not that great of a song. It's very just thrown together and it seems to be thrown out there. There's better patriotic songs yes. I think, that are, yeah. that are, you know, God bless, you know, um, you know, like um, God bless America to me is much more like that should be played at more patriotic things than, right. but I, you know, I don't want, I'm probably going to be, you know, tired. Oh, you know, Billy Ray Cyrus did a song about soldiers, uh, you know, um, that I think is really perfect for Memorial Day. So you're right. This is not an anti-patriotic song. No, no, no. The yeah. Greenwood song is, you know, after 9-11. I, did, you know, I just uh, think it's really basic and easy. And it was sort of yes. like, you know, here it is. And then it's there, there's other stuff that people, you know, like I said, maybe I'm just a traditionalist and I love God bless America. You know, who knows? Or, you know, like you said, um, Billy Ray Cyrus. Yeah. Not I don't mind Achy Breaky Heart either, to be honest with you. I do. That was actually one um, of my least favorites. Oh, really? Man, oh, I'm yeah. Sorry. That I was, mean, it's, that's definitely a top five. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to think about that, and I'll get back to you next episode because there has to be something that I, that I, that I just cringe with and don't like. Um, you know, there's, I, but I, but I like all different kinds of music, so it's not like I'm going to say all of this country or this or that or that sort of thing. So who knows? So, but good, good point. Good, you know, yeah. I'm sure we'll get some input on that. Um, my hot mic take, I want to give a big shout out. I thought about this the other day and I've been coaching for a long time. I honestly believe of all the sports that parents go and watch. So we're going to throw golf out because parents don't really come and watch golf. Um, you know, track and field parents, you are the real MVPs because you go to these meets. The weather is either awful or burning hot. Like there's no in between. And the thing about this sport is that you know, you go to a other sporting event, even if it's a cross country race, it's one race. So if you're there to watch your kid, it's one race, it's done. But like my, for example, I'll just use my son, he runs distance. So he'd run the four by eight, which is the first event. And then doesn't run like the mile until about halfway through the meet, and then possibly another event at the end. So as a parent, you show up to this thing, you're there for the long haul. Yeah. And other than like about depending on the, if your kid's a sprinter, other than maybe about 90 seconds of time or two minutes and 30 seconds of time, you're just sitting in the stands waiting for the next event. Hours in I hours say, on time. So swim meets though might be worse th- because it's the it's same. It's the same similar. athletic setup. It's the same yes. athletic setup. You're you're, you're st- indoors and you and got hum- to, yeah. Depending on where you are. Oh um, man. It depends on you know if I'm at a meet at Carlson, I could walk around anywhere I want. You know. Yeah. Right? So, but yeah, man, it, it's you're right. Track. The thing is, if you get a nice day with track, and there wasn't too many of them this spring, but no. if you get a nice day, it's tolerable. Yeah, um, boy, that's a good that's a good comparison because okay, swim you're never going to be freezing cold, but you're also going to always be muggy and sticky in this cramps, closed pool. Cramps, the smell yeah. of chlorine, and yes. really nowhere to go. Whereas swim, track and field, you're taking the risk of okay, 
it, it might be freezing. You could also go back out to your car and like say, okay, you're running into mm-hmm. event, another event an hour later. I mean, I guess you could do that and swim too, really. But they are they are very similar. They are very similar. You're right. I I just want to give. I, I think of it as I look up in the crowd and I see the meat starts and the sun is up and the meat ends and it's almost like yeah. dusk and it's cold right. or it's super hot and it's just a long day. And I thought about that this year. It's like, you know, and I get it like other sports, like if your kid plays basketball or football or something, they may be on the bench, but you know, you, right. they, you, you know that they could go in and out any time. Whereas track, like I know my son's running the four by eight. The next up is the mile. Yeah. He's not, I know poor Mr. Nathan law at this meet at Celine, his kid didn't run until 1230 in the morning because this meet took forever. And he's, I, I talked to him at like four or five o'clock. Like it's just, it, 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 it's just, again, kudos to track and field parents. We'll, we'll lump swimming parents in there as well, because I think like most of the other sports, you get there, you watch, it's a, it's also a game that's going on. There's a running score, you know, what's going on. And like, you know, it's like these sort of events uh, it's just different. So a big shout out. That's my hot mic take season's wrapped up. Good luck to our state athletes. Um, but again, it's, it, you track parents. Um, plus we rope you into working. Do they do that in swim still too? Do swim parents um, have to go down? Yeah, taking the time. Yeah, yes. that's the other thing too. You go to a football game. Yeah, you're not you're not down there uh, like giving the kids water or sometimes I guess they work the chains. But I mean, for the most part, you're in the stands watching the game. Basketball game, you're not running the book. Volleyball, you're not calling the out of bounds on the outside, you know. But for some reason, for track and field, not only do you come and watch the sport, but hey, we're going to put you to work. Yeah. Big yeah. shout out to track and field parents. Banquet is this Wednesday uh, for Miss Torres and Mr. Sweeney's team. Um, so we're looking forward to that. All right. Is tonight the Boston Miami game seven? Tonight is game seven. Are you going to speak on that? Do you want to speak on that or what's your thoughts? Man, I, I'm like, uh, you know, I, I when I, I'm ranking the teams in the NBA, I think I have Boston on the bottom. Uh, oh. The Bulls and Lakers are certainly right there. But I, I, Oh, you mean not as what their talent is of what your no. dislike of them? Dislike. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. The talent level in this series, Boston is is infinitely better. I, I, it's not even close. Um, but Miami is probably top ten least favorite teams, you know, because they had a little thing with the Pistons there briefly. Uh, but I, man, I am so disappointed at what happened Saturday night. And it really was one of the greatest games you'll ever see, especially late. I mean, the last couple minutes was just one amazing play after the next um but the way it ended you know boston got to tip in uh at the buzzer so i I just i don't see miami able to emotionally psychologically recover from that um i think they'll play hard because they have an amazing coach and jimmy butler as poorly as he played saturday he's he's a badass i mean he's a good player and he's tough as nails mentally and physically and everything else but i I just don't see a team coming back from that. I hope I'm that, wrong. I hope. Uh, we... And that game's in Boston, but correct? It's in Boston. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's just going to be, that's going to be tough to overcome. Um, however, Denver's just sitting back resting. I guess that's a good thing. You know, right? I don't know, man. You know, I, that's the age old question. Do you want the time off? A lot of people say the Tigers may have won a world series. Yeah. I think basketball, time. I think basketball, you sort of do. I think basketball is different. I think most of the time, I think most of the time the team that rests in basketball does well. Baseball is a funky sport because you start shifting pitching rotations and that sort of thing. Um, so I think that um, I'm hoping, cause I don't, I don't know if I can handle, I really don't want either Miami or Boston to win the championship. So I guess I, in a way I sort no. of hope Miami does win. Cause I think that would be the easier matchup for uh, Denver as well. But you and I are kind of on the same page with our dis- disdain of Boston teams. So yes. know the Red Sox, well, I was cheering for it at the time and I regret it 20 years ago, almost came back from three Oh against the Yankees. And, and now the, the Celtics and Mike to add insult to injury at the end of the game, the other day in Miami, and they showed Johnny Damon, who was a member of that Celtics. Oh team. my goodness. The uh, Boston was, team. Oh, man. You're just killing me with this. Yeah. So, yep. But I think it's going to be Boston. Although I am a Boston fan because of Johnny Schreiber. Uh, who's yeah, of course. And, with him, so. Oh, man, I wonder if he ever listens. Do you think Johnny's ever tuned in? I don't know. I don't know. I, it's family. I don't want to offend yeah, family. Yeah, you got to make that happen. <laughs> if we can get the Red Sox to become fans of the show, and I'll take maybe, back. Maybe. Maybe we'll become the Boston. official podcast of the uh, Boston the Boston Red Sox. The Tigers um, lost today, but they're – 
the Pirates have fallen under 500 today. Their 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 month of May has just been atrocious. Uh, but the Tigers are like a game under 200, but they're right in the playoff hunt. They're right in the uh, – Two games out of first, two games under 500, yeah. Man, the AL Central is awful. Oh, my goodness. Jeez. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, so, uh, graduation week, do you want to give a, any uh, – as we close, do you want to give a big shout-out to the class of 23? I think that's about where we're yeah. at. So this, uh, this will come out that Friday morning. Looks like it's going to be Such beautiful. Fun... Sunny, warm, yeah. hot, actually. Right. Hot, yes. Yep. But yeah, I'd but rather hot it. than cold. I mean, yep. Yes. Um, no, what a great group. They really, this is, you groups, you know, the little quick education topic here. The classes seem to vary by year, right? This is a very good one. Um, you know, they were freshmen when COVID hit. Um, yep. So now they overcome, they overcame a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that we, Wise All Music DJ their prom this last Thursday. It was a great prom. That's another reason why we couldn't record. Our Thursday night was taken up. Uh, they had a wonderful prom that Miss Wynn and Miss Fowler put on as their class sponsors. Um, the um, it was a great time. It was a beautiful night. It was a little chilly, but still that sil Silver Shores and Wyandotte. Um, it's just um, I'm happy for them for how everything worked worked out for how it started. They're gonna have a beautiful night for graduation. We have senior breakfast on Wednesday. So again, just want to congratulate the class of 23. I had a privilege working with them. Um, you know the grad party already one already hit one grad party. Um, already someone getting ahead of the game, uh, you know, Landon Turner hit that grad party. So um, it, it, again, another fun year and um, another great group. So, yeah. All right. Well, we will see everybody back. Um, we'll try to get in the studio maybe next week because uh, uh, we only got two weeks left right of school. That's not a bad thing. All right. Everybody have a great week and we will see you next week.